What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. We have been working here all day long. My ass has been planted down here in the man cave. We've had so many different things that are going on. It has literally been insane. You're probably sick and de- sick and tired of me. I- I'm sick and tired of me, damn it. I- I'm ready to literally take this bottle of water and just splash it in my face because I'm tired. But we started out this morning with hearing that the Michael Irvin case was dismissed and, of course, going through all that. Then we saw the actual tape and everything else, and, of course, they refiled it. Then we heard that they re-signed Donovan Wilson, which was like, oh, my God, okay, so we did something. The the lights are on in Texas. Then we heard about, of course, uh, them making a trade using one of their uh, fifth-round compensatory picks to trade for Stephon Gilmore. And as soon as I had caught my breath, because I thought literally the internet would break because the Cowboys made a move in free agency, here it is, they re-signed Leighton Van Der Rush, Leighton Van Der Rush. And I'm just like, I can't believe this. And so we've got a lot of stuff going on. I've got to bring my buddy here. My man, game time. I got it right this time. Game time in here for a point counterpoint. And we're going to do a bunch of mini points, I think, in here because there's so, many, there's so many things that are going on. Because, um, you know, well, I tell you what, let, let's do this first. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble. All right. So, Brian, were you, I, I know you were fro- freezing out there. Uh, I, I literally know that you were striking off all the lists. You know, you had the late rain, sleet, and snow. You had the, the, the snow. Yeah, you was, had some it wind. Was bad. It was cold. As, and I'm sure your, your nuts froze today. Well, it was one of those deals where uh, a piece of mail, like, fell out of my hand, and it literally went a block down the street. And I had to go get it, obviously. So it was one of those days where you had to make sure you held on to everything and just a, it was just the very day. windy here. It's going to be another windy one tomorrow, but it's going to be 20 degrees warmer. Yes. But Actually, I, I, I changed my plans because I was going to go down because I figured Cowboys ain't going to do nothing. They ain't going to do <laughs> shit. So I was like, I'm going to go down. down the road. But then it was like, it's only going to be like 41 degrees and like 45 yeah. mile an hour wind gusts. It's like, nah, I'm not ripping off that siding off the house there. I, I said, I'll wait. So I'm going to go actually tomorrow for the day. And of course, then that means all hell will break loose because I won't be here. But today was very eventful. Were you surprised that the Cowboys did all of those moves today? Were were you shocked like I was? I was very shocked. You know, you know, the Cowboys in recent years, they do not hit this early in free agency. Um, I understand it was their own guys, but very important pieces were brought back. So I'm very happy. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do to Brian, okay? I'm, I'm going to screw him up because I'm going to throw some curveballs because we talked about a few things, but I'm going to change some stuff up. You know, we, we've seen some stuff out here with trades, you know, like Darren Waller traded for a third-round pick. You know, we got Jalen Ramsey traded for a third-round pick, right? It seems like, and for us to get Stephon Gilmore for a fifth round. Do you think that that was a good move for Darren Wall? I mean, excuse me, a good move for Stefan Gilmore? Yeah, it was a great move. He fits perfect in Dan Quinn's system. He's a shutdown corner. Now what are you going to do? Now what are you going to do if you're an opposing team? I understand mm-hmm. he's, he's 32. He'll play at 33. Great move for a compens- uh, our fifth-round compensatory pick. That's like house money. And it's it was only 10 – It's. It's a $10 million deal. Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised if they don't add a year, stretch it out. Mm -hmm. You know Dallas don't want to give up a fifth. You know how they love all their picks for just a one and done. Um, I think they might try and get a couple years out of the guy. Maybe give him a little more guaranteed money, stretch it out, bring down the cap number even more. I love the move. I believe he had that injury in New England. Well, he had got, the Achilles. Yeah, the, okay, Achilles. So he kind of slowed down. New England traded him to Carolina. That year was not that great. He, he kind of rebounded with the Colts. The Colts, of course, with the new um, new coach and stuff, seems like they're trying to clear cap room and kind of start all over and stuff, and that's where he became expendable. Um, Fifth-round pick, that wasn't that's, too much for you? 
Not at all. Not at all. Not for a shutdown. He's six one. He's a little. He's like six one and a half. He mm-hmm. fits into the Dan Quinn mold. He he plays the way they want to play. It's perfect. It's a perfect move for right now. That doesn't mean that they're not going to draft a young guy, but that means most likely Jordan Lewis is bye byes. Uh, that, that was going to be my it, next point. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I don't want to get. I mean, I don't want to jump ahead. You no, asked me okay. if it was good. No, no, no. But I think Jordan I Lewis definitely it. becomes expendable because he didn't play much last year, being injured, and that's four and a half million dollars the Cowboys could get, where they could go ahead and do something else. So th- this point counterpoint is kind of a little different than usual because we're kind of talking about on. I'm I'm in agreement with him. The thing I Both realize yeah. about Cowboy fans is it doesn't matter what the Cowboys do that somebody is going to be pissed off and say it's a stupid move. So I'm hearing, you know, some people, he's too old, he's past his prime, he's done. It's kind of the same way they used to talk about Calais Campbell when I wanted to sign him. Did anybody watch the game last year that we played against the Colts? Yeah, he, he ended up getting a, an interception that should have yeah, been he, Michael Gallup. He had two interceptions last year, mm-hmm. okay? Um, I want to say he's got 26 for his career. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a like crazy number like that. That's a lot of damn interceptions. Well, um, I, 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 saying he's I can the drop. I can drop the mic on this one. Who would you rather have, Anthony Brown or Stephon Gilmore? <sighs> hey, Mister. Uh, there you Mr. go. Real technique. Yeah. No. Okay. No. I'm Chris rocking the mic right yeah, now. Yeah. Right. Okay. Just don't slap me yet. <laughs> you, know, you can you could put you, you like virtual slap me. You know. Okay. That's fine. But All um, right. we're in agreement then. It's, yeah. uh, this, okay. So we're but we're just pointing and pointing. We're pointing in the direction of saying that's better. Okay. With bringing back Leighton Van Der Esch and now getting Stefan Gilmore, the and and of course bringing back Donovan Wilson, the Dallas Cowboys back in is one of the best in football now. Uh, I'm going to tell you, their defensive secondary is the best in football. I'm sorry, it is. I'm not talking one, two. I'm talking one, two, bland, three. McQuamu, who who came on in the playoffs, is now going to be able to be in the secondary. Um, We're deep. We're real deep. Uh, And we're going to draft a young one, which is fine. Get another one in the mix. Um, but it doesn't have to be in the first round. This is what I was talking to you. You know, we like we got to start plugging some of these holes. I didn't know that we were gonna. You know, I don't. I don't want to jump out of line. I, you know, I don't know who we're going to next. But I didn't know that we were gonna plug all the holes that we did already. It's just day two. Well, I am gonna say I'm gonna pump the brakes on saying that it's the best yet. It is really good, but see, you know, sometimes your back end is really, really good because your front end is great. Right. And I'm not sure that we are going to be great on the front end because for me, if you have an Aaron Rodgers, and we have seen it many, many times, if he's got five, six, seven seconds to throw the football, eventually somebody is going to get open. So I will say I will reserve judgment on that until I see what we have. And for me, the key on that is still the man in the middle. To me, that's the biggest bang for the buck that the Cowboys can do right now is getting a big immovable force, at least signing Hankins back. And I would say if they added a Bobby Wagner to this, I would give you that. To well, me, I was including Donovan Wilson and Malik Hooker. Yeah. Well, I mean that, that whole that, group that, of that guys. Whole group, it, it's really good. It's very good. But if it, if the quarterbacks have time and and they can do, they well, can kill you at the short stuff. They can do that stuff. with anybody. Okay. You know what I mean? They can do that with anybody, Mark. You can have Dion, and they, but you know you can only you know for, you know cover for so long. True so. on that one. Yes. You know, I would say that. But, yeah, you are correct. And we'll, there's, that's why I'm on the side. I'm excited. I'm happy. But there's still a couple more moves that need to be done. You know, you brought up Bobby Wagner. I would be surprised if they brought him in at this point. Um, I don't know that we need him. And I think that you are on the side that you think we need him. Um, <laughs> so we could talk about that if you want. But. I think we're good. Man. My problem with the Cowboys is this. We always have great frontline guys. That's never been our problem. The problem is, is once you get past our frontline guys, it is the backups that is the problem. That is such a step down. The reason I'm happy about Donovan Wilson coming back is people are like, oh, you know, we got Malik Hooker and we've got J. Ron Curse. Well, you know, those guys were a little bit nicked up 
from time to time this past year. And sometimes we had to rely more on Donovan Wilson than we could on J. Ron Curse. And the thing about the two of them are is you got Donovan Wilson, who's really kind of like a hybrid linebacker. He's a better in that heavy nickel. He is that run stopper. And, of course, J. Ron Curse is a better cover guy. This gives you position flexibility and better matchups. And that's where the Cowboys have to look at it as – much as possible in multiple positions that there's not just one guy who can fit the bill and do everything. Everything is kind of specialized, which is why I look at a Bobby Wagner who does not get injured versus yeah. Leighton Van Der Esch. <clears throat> when Van Der Esch got hurt, which he always does, he's got Tyrone, uh, Tyron Smith itis. You're going to miss time with him. And is Deron Bland really, you know, he's really more of a weak side, you know, um, a linebacker. Well, yeah, I don't yeah. know that he's going to be that thumper in the middle. I know that if you put a Bobby Wagner in the middle, he's going to be able to do what a hellacious, hellacious job on the run. In which case, you start making teams more one-dimensional where that secondary is going to be able to feast. So I would love to be able to say, Bobby Wagner is still on the table because even with Leighton Van Der Esch last year, we ended up still signing Anthony Barr. Right. And I will say right. that Bobby Wagner is a much better upgrade than Bobby Wagner Anthony Barr. is a tackling machine, and he did get a couple turnovers this year, right? Um, six. I'm sorry, two. Six sacks, six sacks two, right. two interceptions. So, yeah, so um, I think that Dan Quinn could definitely use him. You know, I don't know how that would work with him and Leighton, but hey, I'm down. He ain't going to make more than Leighton. I'm telling you now. And that was the only reason why I was excited because Leighton is familiar with the system, had a great year, and it was a cheap deal. Let's face it. Well, five, I mean, he's basically five and a half million. Um, but that's a year. that's that's yeah you know, for what he did. That's fine, and I think. Wagner is looking probably for about to say he might have to the numbers may look to be higher than that but when it comes down to it it's going to be around 11 or 12 guaranteed something mm -hmm. like that so well we'll see I'm, I'm I'm good I mean I would be great you know because if you still got Damone Clark um you know we lost a couple guys so and you know Cox really hasn't you know, Jabril Cox, we don't really know. You They're know, high on him, but, yeah. you know, so was I wouldn't be opposed to Was it an ACL for him? Yeah, he had an ACL, and he he was, I think, from what I was hearing is that he kind of re-aggravated it in training camp. Not, mm -hmm. so, not necessarily a tear, but it was just a week. So maybe this offseason he was able mm -hmm. to get a, you know, strengthened but it's getting down to the nitty-gritty with him he needs to do That's something third year. but he's a good special teamer and we lost a couple so don't expect him to go anywhere he's going to be there and the boss man fat was our best special teamer and cj goodwin's still a free mm -hmm. agent so i don't expect him back i think luke so, gifford is too isn't he Luke Gifford already yeah. signed with the Tennessee Titans. Right, so, he's so that's gone. another linebacker so, that we lost. And Noah too. Brown, who was another. Yeah. Stand out, so, no more Clifford fine. Franklin for the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. So the Cowboys have taken care of the defense. Are we now looking at the Dallas Cowboys being led by the defense and that offense is now the new defense where they used to kind of say, eh, I don't get defense. Who needs defense? We can just score a whole lot of points. Are we now reversing the Dallas Cowboys and saying defense is everything? Screw the offense? It looks like it. We're going to win a lot of uh, 20 to 17, 23 17 games. They want to take the air out of the ball, which I'm not opposed to because that you know, sets up play action. They want to play dominating physical defense and run the ball and mm -hmm. set up play action. So, okay, I'm all for it, man. That's up Dak's alley, and that's not a slight on Dak. Oh, well, what are you trying to say? That's how you play winning football. I'm actually going to disagree with you on that. That it's not that they're not going to be worried about the offense as well, because here's the thing. I think what they ended up doing is is right now the urgency is we have to keep these two guys. We have to keep Blayton Van Der Esch. We got to keep Donovan Wilson. They were key to that defense that stopped the the, the other teams right now. 
okay? But I believe that they are going to make some moves on the offense. And, in fact, I will dare say that them making the moves that they have on defense are actually setting them up to be able to pick the best players available for the offense. Because right now, as you look at it, you say, even if we don't make any other moves on the defense, there are free agents kind of like you have Carlos Watkins and things like that that you can put on the defensive line that will help you out. You've got your main pass rushers in, um, of course, Micah Parsons, D-Law. You've got Dante Fowler and Dorrance Armstrong, so you really are okay there. You still have Quentin Bohannon on the defensive line and Gallimore as well as OC. So you actually have good people in there. It's not chopped liver. Is it, you know, Namak and Sue two years ago? No. But it's serviceable with the back end that we have, and even with Leighton Vanderesh, you don't necessarily have to do a lot. It would be great to get Bobby Wagner and so on, but they've set up the defense where you don't look at it and say, We have glaring holes that we must address in the draft immediately. Agreed? But this is that's exactly what you want to do. You yeah. want to fill these holes. And we, there, my opinion, there's still one more glaring hole that needs to be filled, but uh, you on know. the defensive line. I mean, the defense. Uh, no, I'm talking about on the offense. Well, we're going to talk about – I'm talking yeah. about the defense right defense, now. Defense, yeah. Defense, Obviously, they set it up because I think um, – I, I think with the offense, I don't think we need though. Wagner. Um, w- I, I mean, would that be great? Sure. Uh, I think you're getting Hankins back, I don't care if it's a one-year deal, that would be smart. Mm-hmm. That would help the depth. Um you know, I'm still telling you that we're going to probably let go a couple guys that we're not thinking. We still got Zeke because right now we're sitting at just over seven mil in cap space. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we figure, we, okay, so we, we're both in agreement that Jordan Lewis is going to go. That's four and a half. I would think so. I, I, I can't see a reason to say we've got to have that guy. Okay, so we figure that one. We figure that they will probably restructure Tyron Smith. And with Tyron Smith, they can kick half of his salary into the voidable year and basically, you know, grab another eight and a half billion dollars. We're not paying Zeke that money. And Zeke is the other one that either we just cut him and grab five or we restructure or not restructure, uh, excuse me, um, try and get him to take another deal. I don't see this. This is the thing that's kind of amazing is I'm not seeing crazy money going very often right now. It seems like the free agent frenzy has been toned down some. And I'm wondering if this is the owners trying to conclude to say, hey, keep that shit down on the down low. Well, the numbers are less. Um, uh, what's his name that just signed with the Raiders, wide receiver uh, from New England? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, Jacoby yeah. Jacoby yeah, Myers. Yeah. yeah, Jacoby Myers. He signed for a three-year, $11 million a year deal. Um, well, he signed for a deal less than Michael Gallup. And, you know, we're talking about a guy who's – you know, 800 yards last year with chopped liver throwing to him in New England. I mean, I looked at that and I was like, shit, I'd, I'd take him right now, you know, over. Now let me over ask Odell. you, I was, I was getting tore up for my comments regarding letting both running backs go. Knowing what you know now and what they're not paying running backs. Anything. Ha. They're not paying squat top. Maybe they should have listened to what I was saying. Let him go out and test the market. Oh, you can still you, you can still you can rescind the the tag. Well, that's what I was getting to. Don't be surprised. Don't be shocked if that tag isn't rescinded. Um, I don't think they're going to do that. But what's the name from uh, uh, the Chargers right now? Power. Who's looking for a trade? We're over, yeah, Eckler. Eckler, yeah, Austin, yeah, Eckler. Austin Eckler's looking for a trade. Evidently, he doesn't want to. He doesn't right like now. the offense that Kellen Moore is, is going to be serving up. Now, I ask you this: you know, you let Pollard go out and get a deal. What's he going to get? He's not the number one. He ain't the number two. He's probably four. He's a, he's a part time. I mean, he's not a full. time You know what guy. I mean? As far as the free agents that are out there, nobody's getting big money. Look what. The penny guy, he got 600000 to go to the Eagles. Yeah. And he's always hurt. And they're talking about how great of a running back and spewing numbers. It makes no sense. And we'll yeah. get, well, this isn't about the Eagles, but they're in a, a lot of trouble with their cap room and what they have yeah. in front of them. And they have to sign their quarterback. They're going to be they're, cutting they're a couple. Of, 
And yeah. so back to this. Yeah. Uh, I, I was trying to find it on Twitter where this the, the, the Eagles called us about big play I'm made on Slay. I, I saw that, and then the reporter, John Clark, has – now he works for the Eagles. He works for the Eagles Network. He's mm-hmm. coming out and saying no, they didn't do it. But multiple outlets are saying the Eagles picked up the phone and called Jerry Jones regarding big play slay. They are desperate in desperate need. Look at over the cap. You, I'm sure you got it in front of you. I'm looking at the Cowboys. He, they have to get rid of him. They can't. Mm-hmm. They are screwed. They're not going to be able to pay Jalen Hurts. You tell me where they're coming up with the money. Well, they're going to have to release the thing Fletcher with Jay, well, Cox. The, the they're going to have to release. Is they still have some years, like year left on it. They can throw okay. a bunch of. I you mean, they can. Gonna- they can make it a you know kind of like Dak Prescott. Okay, because here, here's the thing. This is the thing that's amazing, and you can look at Dak Prescott's contract and say, now it's actually been a really good contract because it was sixteen million dollar cap hit the first year. It was nineteen the second, and it's twenty seven this year. So you hear forty million a year. It ain't forty million a year on the cap, and that's all that really matters. So they can give him a lot of guaranteed money and bonus money and make it low that first year, put a couple of avoidable low years. meaning what though? When you're talking fifty five million, what, eighteen to twenty million, that would yeah. be low to me. And they're nowhere near that with the cap as well is all I'm saying. Yeah. They have to do major restructures slash well, the cutting Eagles people. are at six million right now. Right. So you just look at the free agents that they have. Big play Slay is due to make twenty six million. That's why they want him to trade. Nobody's going to trade yeah, with you. Gonna they know you're going to have to Jeez. cut them. And if you know, it's twenty two million dead money, and but, we're already talking you know, about a team that's already fifty four million in dead. So, so I ask you, yeah. and I and I put this out to Twitter, and I had Eagle fans coming back at me saying, "No, no, no." Was Jerry Jones right in saying that they went all in? Because I tell you, looking at it now, I didn't realize it was that bad. And the fact that they went out and gave Bradbury yeah, that money, Slay is gone. He is gone. They cannot bring him back unless you're going to go to jail and Hurts and say, we ain't giving you any money this year. You're going to have to wait. After well, his injury, you think he's prob- going to wait? So Now's the, the time. The only thing they can, well, if, if they can't get a trade, I mean, cutting him, you're only saving $4 million. Uh, that that's that's taking even a in a million. post June. That's a pre June first. A post June first. I don't know. If, I'm you, not can, if you can trade him post June first, you would uh, end up saving seventeen million. There you go. If you cut him post June first, it's um, eight point six. So I mean, they can go ahead and make him a June first, yeah. but then I mean, that's you can't, probably going to happen. Who's going to want to use trade? the money until after he's thirty two, Mark? He's 32 years old. Who's going to give him that kind of money? That's why he's the same age as the guy we got, and we're paying him $10 million on yeah, for a fifth-round pick where we're probably going to restructure him yeah. and give him a couple of years, they've which got, is well, the smart they've, they've thing to do. They've got Lane Johnson, who is – he's another $24 million hit. That's why everybody was like, oh, Kelsey's coming back. That killed you, Eagles fans. Well, I know Kelsey's we're not doing point-counterpoint, um, but yeah, by Kelsey coming hit. back – that kind of hurt you because you had a center right there in Landon Dickerson that was ready to roll. You lost all yeah, your they depth. Are, they are actually, yeah, knowing that they have, they don't have, uh, let's see. Jaylen, Fletcher Cox, you Jaylen might be Hurts, bye-bye. Right. Okay, so Jalen Hurts is a 4.70. Again, they can basically put it as an extension and keep most of that money and keep him down like $15 million or so the first year. But even so, they still have to find some more money. And looking at there's not uh, with the exception of Lane Johnson and Slay, those are the two big contracts. I mean, Brandon Graham is only nine, uh, Kelsick is nine, AJ Brown is eight. They could probably get a little bit out of that one. Jordan Mulata is uh, seven, Hassan Reddick is six. You know, Dallas Goddard is six. Josh Sweat. Anyway, that's their problem. I mean, they're no, ba- I know. They're basically going to have to, track, they're gonna have to basically nickel and dime. You know, grab a million here, grab a two million dollar there, to try and do a whole lot of moves. They're not going to be able to do a lot of big moves. No, uh, we do have some fat that we can trim. Like we said, we do have uh, Jordan Lewis. We've got Zeke's deal we can mess with. We could mess with D laws if we really wanted to, but I'm not I sure I want to mess with that. Yeah, I'm with you. That's a big that number, one. but uh, still. Okay. All right. Um, 
I feel better about our situation than theirs. So we've definitely upgraded our defense. Our defense on paper at the moment looks better than it did. Offense. Let's talk about the offense here. We're actually getting a little long-winded here. Hopefully, uh, you, you got a little bit of time for a few minutes. I'm fine. I Offensively, just feel like, you know. the Cowboys, I'm hearing rumors that they are looking and they're trying to make sure they make the best decision. They don't want to do basically like a big play slay. We're just going to grab somebody and we're going to put them in there and hope that you know it doesn't kill us. Odell Beckham Jr., I'm hearing that he's looking for 15 to 20. Now, I'm going to say that I think that's bullshit because I don't say I'm looking for 15 to 20 because then I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to give you 15. You, you never say, oh, I'm looking for this range. Okay, I'm going to take the lower part of the range. Don't give me the higher part. Right. It's all. Is Odell Beckham Jr., let's, let's split the difference and say because we know other teams are looking at him. We've got Aaron freaking Rodgers, who technically is not a Jet yet, but is forcing I think he's just enjoying I don't know wrapping they them more around money, do they? I, well, he's literally wrapping them around his finger. So, you know, they're talking to to uh to Lazard and they're talking to Randall Cobb to try and make it you know, you literally he is like a kid in a freaking candy store and his mom and dad are trying to keep him from crying and having a tantrum tantrum. <laughs> uh, that, that's what he's like. Oh, okay. I want Lazard. We don't need Lazard. But I want, I want Randall I Cobb. Want I want uh, I want I mean, Lazard. I want yeah. Lazard. Right? Okay. Okay. Okay, Johnny. Okay. We'll, we'll get out on Lazard. Okay. I want Where's Randall Johnny? Cobb. No, Johnny. You you just got Lazard. I want Randall Cobb. I want Randall Cobb. You're putting some talent Randall there. Cobb. That's hysterical. Okay. But, They're not going for OBJ. Okay. Point, okay. So. But, and then you hear he also wants. Odell Beckham Jr. Right. It's kind of like, I think he's literally like, okay, yeah, I, I equate it to, remember in Die Hard when they're talking to the FBI and they're saying, okay, here's our list of demands here. You know, we want uh, yeah. such a, and the guy's like, who? Asian he's Don? Like, Asian Don, what the hell is that? He's like, I've read it in time or some shit. Okay, I'm just throwing this shit in here. Okay, uh, yeah, right? that that's what funny. it feels like with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so, but we've heard that Kansas City might be interested in the new beefy beefy odell beckham jr okay he looks like a thick man there now they're not paying him that i know i i keep saying that because they that they went out and signed the best offensive guard in the uh free agent pool after winning the super bowl so but yeah i think uh, he wants to come to dallas i just think he's trying to and i don't blame odell he's trying to pump up the price but I think it's going to be all smoke and mirrors with that money. It's all going to come down to the guarantees. I think we need him. Um, now, after trading a fifth, do you think we're still going to be able to maybe trade a you know third what? for Hopkins? Hey, okay. Are you on Possibly. Board? Okay. Here's where, where I look at it. At this moment, for me, getting Gallimore for a fifth round is like house money. That's a compensatory pick, bro. That yeah, ain't Jack. Is. Okay. We got two of those. You know, look at our fifth round picks in recent years. Have we gotten anybody close to a Gallimore? Uh, Gilmore? No. Uh, well, we got Bland, but that was okay. But that the, was, we've yeah, had yeah. one one year. With no, him. he's not a he, yeah, he's, he's not Gilmore. He's not Gilmore. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. he he's not bad, but typically, yeah, you, you can no, probably right. put put on two fingers of Simi Fajoko who who can't get on the field. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, I would rather, I would rather give up a third round pick and get Hopkins, okay, then sign Odell because Hopkins at least was healthy. Hopkins doesn't have the baggage that Odell Beckham does because you know Odell, it, you know, he's he's always a tantrum chance of away when things don't go his way. He was a solid citizen with the Rams because they were winning and they mm -hmm. were a great team. And he's always been the me, me, me guy, and I'm afraid that he would end up being that guy in the locker room that could destroy a team. I think Hopkins, uh, you actually convinced me on Hopkins. Yeah, now I'm going to go against Hopkins 79, right now. 79 yards a game with who throwing to him? I, I, exactly. With who and, throwing to him. And I would love to see him in the slot. You put C.D. Lamb outside as the exactly. number one. You put wow. him in the slot. And hopefully, um, Gallup 
is closer to where he was before the injury on the outside, um, you've got a formidable wide receiver core. I don't think they're going as much as I can be counterpoint. Yeah, I don't think they're going for Odell Beckham at this point. I think he did price himself out. I think Dallas, like I told you, I think they were trying to get either or, and the mm-hmm. fact that they got Van Der Esch and Donovan back, um, and now they're still uh, possibly for Wagner. I think that's they are out on the Odell Beckham. Yes, Just my but opinion. I don't think they're out on wide receiver. They realize. I don't think they they're screwed. out on wide receiver now. And, I'm going to put another one out here because the rumor was yesterday that Denver had three of their receivers up, Court and Sutton and Jerry Judy, and I forgot the name of the other one. Cowboys called. Handler. Chandler. K.J. Handler. Yeah, Handler. Yeah. Cowboys called Denver before they had called about Brandon Cooks to Denver about Jerry Judy. Now, what we're hearing is, of course, they're looking for a lot of draft capital. Yeah. But the reason why Judy may make sense is he's still only like $5 million a year, and you could keep him at a low cost. So if you're talking about maybe a second-round pick, would you rather oh. have a second-round pick go for Jerry Judy or a third-round pick for going for Hopkins? Youth uh, versus I, I, age. They would probably go for Judy. I think you. Know, I would go for Judy too, because I don't I look know at that him and I say would, he's younger. He hasn't done nothing. Whereas Hopkins, I know, but I, I mean, I, I mean, I hear you. I'm not going to look it's at your hold on, I, hold on. Let's look at their quarterback situations. He's had to play in there. Uh, Hopkins, look at his mess. But yeah, I, I mean, I know. I just don't want to give up anything high for these guys. I'm okay um, giving up a second because we don't do other shit. Guy? With I actually a second. like what's his name? He's Gordon from, Sutton. Yeah, I like Corlin Sutton. Mm-hmm. He's an outside guy. See, that's what I think we need. I think we need an outside guy, you know, and then you could have um, CD in, in the, the slot. slot. That's kind of what I like. They're not going to do that. They are all, they're like what you're saying. They like Judy. I'm not saying, you know, and I will say this to Judy. He runs slants all day. Mm-hmm. To me, that's what I want uh our guy CD to do, mm-hmm. so that's why I kind of wanted somebody like Corton okay. Sutton, a big right. guy on the right. outside. But hey, I'm not going to argue. You get me a receiver, and we go into this draft. Obviously, I want a receiver, and I want Hankins back. I think I'm good to go at that point. You know, we need to bring back probably uh, one of the long snappers. You know, you got to mm-hmm. just remember that we'll have to get a kicker at some point. Um, after that, we can go into the draft. And I'm well, eyeing up, if, man. I am eyeing up as like this D lineman that might be there, and I'm excited. So yes, I don't care, man. I'm not going to counterpoint okay. you. Get me one of them receivers. Well, here's here's what would be great, and we're going to get ready to finish on this one because we've actually gone long winded here. But if the Cowboys were to get a receiver, then at this point you can go into the draft and basically get the best player available. Um, And that, you know, the Cowboys typically liking to get the top prospect at a position when they draft. It actually sets you up to be able to get possibly the best guard, the best tight end. You know, uh, yeah, positions, I'm with you. I'm, positions that they like to, again, that, that they have a need. Um, I love Hendershot. I love Jake Ferguson. But, you know, the West Coast is predicated on that great tight end. And there are yeah. some really great tight ends that are in there. If you ended up taking your second round pick or your third round pick and getting a true starting receiver, I'm okay taking the first round pick for best player available. And yeah. it might be that guard or tight end or even running back. And then you just yeah, say, I mean, Zeke, bye. Yeah, well, I, I think, I think, I, I mean, I think Zeke's done. I don't, I think you already, you know, and you could rescind it. I don't think they're going to rescind the tag. Uh, I don't think they would do that to him, but who knows? I don't think Zeke's coming back at this point. Zeke's probably going to want to come back after he's, you know, he sees what's out there. Why yeah. would you not want to come back on a one year cheap deal? Oh, there's see a- what. Yeah, running backs, I don't see any kind of money so, going right now. I'm looking at, and we don't have to get into the names. I know we're long-winded, but D-tackle, um, edge rusher. Calais Campbell. You know, we can, a role or tight end. I'm looking at that 
you know, with our first pick, unless something ridiculous happens and B. John Robinson drops, but I've been talking about him. I don't expect that, but anything can happen. I think a lot of cornerbacks are going to go. A lot of offensive lot of linemen are going to go. A lot of quarterbacks are going to go. Mm-hmm. A lot of tight ends. So we just sit and, and pick the best one. That's why it's very important that we that Take we lock the up holes. these holes. Mm-hmm. Like we fill these holes. Yeah. I'm good. I'm feeling right. good. Well, a lot Brian, better today than I was yesterday. I Brian, tell, tell everybody where to find you and tell us what's coming up. Game Time Brian. You can find me on Game Time Brian on YouTube and Twitter. I've been doing a lot on Twitter. Uh, I think me and Phil might be going tomorrow night and doing a live, but don't mm-hmm. hold me to that. We, I definitely will be going on Saturday night. Mm-hmm. And we'll be talking about everything Cowboys and free agency. Okay. And also, too, we're talking about hitting the road, Jack, and going to the draft. We will be on location at the draft. We're going to be driving up. Um, we're having a road trip here, guys. We're not doing. We're not. We're not gassing up the RV. We're doing an SUV. And we're staying in a hotel, motel, Holiday Inn. I'm going to see if I can't hit a couple cones. So just out of ooh. Uh, and yeah, and, I, and of, we might even uh, along the might have a few stops along the way that we might try and see if we can do some meetups in places. So oh, that'd be cool. If you're somewhere between DC and Kansas City on the road. Hit us up and let us know and say, hey, you need to stop off at Soho, such and a rutch, and we'll have lunch together or something. You That'd know? be cool. That That'd would be, be cool. Fun. You yeah. know, press the flesh. Oh, no. Let me not say press the flesh. Because <laughs> no. l- Lord knows, I, I just, uh, there's a lawsuit coming right yeah, now. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm Mark Holmes with my man, Game Time Brian, and I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And, um, let me finish off with this one for you guys here as we roll on out. Fuck them birds. Fly, eagles, fly. Now nah, we shoot those birds out of the sky. Stupid dumbasses managed to give up a third and 30 to my sexy arm. Pathetic defense and team. No wonder I own those piece of shit frauds every damn year. Don't get me started on the fans. You boo me while I earned a respected award. Losing the Super Bowl was just karma for you fuckheads. I can't wait to drop 100 on your heads next season while being the daddy of the NFC East again.